So you're looking to do some power window roll-ups or roll-downs in your car, right? Easy enough. Until you actually go to do the job, right? Now, you see all this stuff I got laid out in front of me. I'm going to actually take my time and I'm going to explain to you exactly how these things all work. And if I do my job right, by the time you watch this video from beginning to end, you should have no fear in tackling this job yourself. No fear whatsoever. It's time to man up and do this thing. So uh, let's start out with some of the stuff that I got with me today. Right here, I brought an alarm system because I'm going to show you how you can integrate the alarm system into your power window roll-up module kit a couple ways. I'm going to show you how you can do it when uh, the most popular way, which is of course when you arm the alarm system that the alarm is going to send a negative pulse output, hold it, and roll all your windows up to keep the bad guys away from your car. Second way is by using a momentary or a latched output channel from your alarm system to do the same feature, which basically on any alarm system is going to have several different buttons on your transmitters depending on what your alarm is. What your alarm is doesn't really make a difference because my video is universal. It'll cover your alarm, um, so don't feel like you ain't special. An alarm's an alarm. Um, this one here, lock and unlock, which don't mean a darn thing. Then you got channel 2, you got channel 3. Now, you got two validity channels that you can actually use for, all, for you know, optional accessories. Well spoken. Okay, so let's just say, for instance, that this alarm system is, has a car... With power door locks, there's your lock, there's your unlock, channel 2, say we're going to use for your trunk output. Now you still got this channel 3 button on the bottom, which you can utilize. Okay? And of course, you're going to have, like any alarm, regardless of what it is, has this orange wire. Orange wire is universal for color and application in any alarm that I've ever seen. Um, except, except, you know, those weird ching chang, ting tang models I've seen that you know people buy for real brands orange wire is is going to be your negative output when the, while the system is armed okay so you got essentially one and you got channel three you got two channels that you can use to integrate with your window modules so let's just say if you wanted to do um, a car alarm system in and of itself and you wanted to have say four windows that roll up at the same time okay this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated but if you listen you understand what you need to do to do the job right without overbuying or underbuying. Because there's nothing worse than going out, getting all your stuff, sitting, getting on your knees, getting ready to get your hands dirty, and you realize you don't even have the equipment to do the job. Okay? So, I brought a couple different models. Both of these are two windows uh, kits. What that means is that on this module, it has enough power and internal relays to function to do two motors in one direction. That's very important, that second part, the two, the two windows in one direction. Okay, so if you wire this up into your, your window system, two wires are going to do one motor in one direction. I don't know if I said that clearly enough. So two wires from the module is do one window in one direction. So let's just say if you had four of these um, power windows in your car and you wanted to have all four travel in one direction. Say when you arm your alarm, all four go up at the same time. You're either going to need two of these, which is a two windows module setup, or something like this, which does four windows in one direction. Okay? Now, to take it a step further, if you wanted to do a four door sedan and you wanted to do all four windows, all four going up, all four going down, you would either need four dual two way window modules or two. Four, four window modules, okay? So before you go ahead and do your job and you go out and buy something and get in the wrong thing, make sure that you ask and you find out that you're getting exactly what you need to do your job. That's important. So with that said, I think we can get to it. Now, a window module in and of, in and of itself is just this, this guy right here. I'm going to take this one because I've had the most experience in my time using them. This is an Omega AU93. It's a two-window module. And again, looking at this, and look, even look at the harness on the Omega. If you look at something from DEI, you can see that they're almost the same kind of thing. They all It's almost like they all come from the same factory. Actually, I believe that they all, for the most part, do. So, let's just take a look at this harness real quick. Because what you see in this harness is going to be very typical of just about anything that you're going to buy. 
Um, and how it works is very simply this. You're going to have two wires, which are going to be thicker. These are around 12 gauge. These are the two wires that you're going to use and cut one of your power window wire motors in your vehicle. And it's going to interrupt it and it's going to throw voltage. Say for instance, if you wanted to roll your window up, I'll use this battery for my uh, demonstration. This is just a standard SPAL aftermarket uh, window motor. These are the two wires that come from it. And here I just have a DeVolt, DeVolt 14 volt battery. Now look at this right there. That's the gear that actually turns the crank on the, um, on the handle. Okay, when I apply 12 volts, it's turning the motor counterclockwise. Now if I take these two wires, reverse them, now you see that the motor is turning clockwise. So basically all it is, these two wires will take this motor and turn it in the direction of the polarity of, of the uh, power source. So if I'm showing it, you know, positive 12 volts on the red, it's going to turn clockwise. If I put 12 volts on the black, it's going to go the opposite direction. Window going down, window going up. You see how it's going? That's all there is to it. Power windows are not complicated devices. They're really not. The only thing that I can say makes these things complicated is the vehicle systems that they're wired in with. Okay, so how that gets a little complicated is this. If it wasn't so dang complicated, they wouldn't have to give you these instruction books. Okay, now in a typical car, you're going to find that there's going to be, in my experience, um, three different kinds of... of uh, wiring scenarios. One is going to be where it switches the 12 volts to activate the motor and rest at ground. There's going to be 12 volts that activate the motors but rest at nothing. And then there's a really weird scenario where you find in Volkswagens, Beamers, Audis, and Mercedes, which I've always frowned on working, where you actually have to have the aid of an additional relay wired into this system to make it work and some of them rest even at 12 volts. It's very weird. Some of those European cars, they're just, they're weird. I never liked those cars. They're always a pain in the ass. So, but let's just say if you have a normal, you know, even like a Nissan, I mean, that's, that's, that's not weird. When I say weird, I mean like really weird. Like you get one of these antique kind of Mercedes or some fancy Bentleys or Rolls Royces, these things, they have always strange, complicated window scenarios for no reason, apparently. But anyway, we got the motor. I think I did an okay job of explaining to you how a motor works, okay? So basically, when you're going to wire up your system, okay, you got, like I was saying, these two wires are devoted to the, um, from one motor going in one direction. So say if you, you're going to do this motor right here, these two you would take, if you're a follower of my work and you see how I work, you'll know what I would do, is I would take these, I would put them on my drill, I'd twist them up, and basically all you're going to do is you're going to take this, interrupt it. So in your car, of course, this is not going to be the end of a wire, but say this here is your up wire. You would cut it, you would put one side, per the instructions, to that side of the motor, and the other side, this would go in line. So all it is is that this module is acting as, you know, a, um, a medium between that wire to throw the power around. But when it's not being utilized, it's just passive and it's just there waiting, you know, for something to happen. That's re really all there is to it. There's no need to complicate this job, make it more, more hard than it really needs to be. Windows are not that big of a deal once you understand how they work. But as far as... Activating these systems, you know, everybody's different. You know, me personally, I like my system to be, you know, when I get out of my vehicle, I hit lock on my transmitter. I just let the orange wire, which is already going to be, you know, split off to my starter disable, because it's grounding that to keep the car from starting. This would go to the module, activate it, and then it would roll my windows up. That's it. Any good module that you're going to buy, if you were wondering, will have a device built into it where it will automatically stop once it once it senses some electrical you know pressure where it can feel that the window is actually closed it will stop now as far as activating this here uh, system to operate of course like I was explaining to you you could just use the orange wire so that way when you get out if your alarm 
passively arms itself, this will ground to tell the module to activate and roll your windows up and that's the end of that. But if you have a setup, a setup where you have a couple window modules and you want it to do, let's say, like a vent where you want it to hit the button like this and say you want it to hold it down, and as long as you're holding it, it'll roll those windows down. That's called a momentary channel. So if you have that function on your alarm system, you could tie it in using your remote control to do that function. Um, so that's a good way to do it. Or also, if you wanted to just do that momentary, you know, on and up, in the opposite of using the orange wire, or you could use a combination of the two, one for up, another one for down. Do whatever the heck you want to do. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's all about person, you know, your personal preferences. But um, again, it all depends on the alarm system that you buy. So when you're going out and you're going to get a system, make good choices. And, um, you know, you won't be paying for it down the road because you feel like, ah, I wish I could have got this or that. Just do it right the first time. That's what I preach. Um, if you're not sure, if you're looking for a system and you really could use some help, you can call us, you can email us. We have several websites. We sell all these products. You know, we do our best to help people out. So that's pretty much all there is to the uh, window module deal. You know, we got the two window, the two ways, the four ways. Um, real quick, I touched on the alarm systems, how you can work these in combination with those. You know, you can really go crazy with this stuff. You can get... A nice system if you have like a hot rod, you can do door poppers, trunk release, window modules, and just go crazy with yourself, you know. But hey, that's that's what I say. Do what you want to do.